Hello and welcome to the playthrough video of the game called Escape from Innsmouth. Escape from Innsmouth is a cooperative game for 1 to 4 players in which you need to collect enough clues to solve the mysteries and then escape from the town to win the game. I already uh, almost set up the game and I'll explain what I did. I'm saying already because I still have to place my investigators on the map but before I do that let me explain what's going on here so I'm playing a two-player game um, a medium two-player game medium difficulty so the first thing I did I formed this wound deck which look which consists of these wound cards dead cards and let me show you these Elder sign cards. For a medium game, you uh, you place two of the dead cards, three of the elder sign cards, and you fill the rest up to twelve with the wound cards. So that's my wound deck, and that basically dictates a di difficulty for the game. Another thing what dictates the difficulty for the game is these thread cubes, which you place here in the center of the omen track. For an easy game you don't place any cubes, for a medium game you place one, and for a hard game you place two. Uh, this doom track here that you can see going from 16 to 0, uh, you're gonna place a doom token depending on the number of players, so for 2 to 3 players it's always on 12, if you're playing with the 4 players it's on 8, and if you're playing with only one player it's on 16. Uh, so this is a timer for the game, so the more players you have, the less time you have, basically. Uh, after that, you're gonna place these mystery tokens, that looks like this, in each block on the map, but not placing them on the buildings. You're gonna place these tokens also on the bridges, because they are also considered to be a block. The block in this game is any space that is surrounded by these points while the districts is the number of spaces of the same color. So this is a block, this whole yellow thing is a district and we have a legend here with the names of the districts and their colors. Uh, so going from left to right this is a graveyard, Southwick Church Green, Esoteric Order of Dagon sand uh, to tongue of sand then we have a uh, outskirts market district uh, town center and the warehouses district after you place all the tokens you're gonna draw these mystery cards and place them from space five to space one that's how so bottom from top and you're gonna add these little bonus tokens on the first three cards same thing with the general store for the items you're gonna place the items from space 5 to 1 and add two bonus tokens to the first two spaces on the general store track lastly you have to place this uh, taxi token face up with a little car shown and the only thing that I haven't done uh, is placing our investigators on the board and the enemies I each player draw two investigators cards and then you choose which one you're gonna play and which one you're gonna set in the reserve for this playthrough I've chosen to play the uh, private eye here and the psychologist while in my reserve were butler and the mobster so I'm gonna explain there abilities later on but now we're gonna place them on the map we have this little uh, let's call them meeples and uh, just to be sure to not mess up their colors I'm gonna copy this so the private eye will be red psychologist will be white and I will make this a bit bigger so 
we're gonna choose the lead investigator it's gonna be psychologist uh, I don't have a token for that yet but I'm gonna copy one of these so that will be my first player token and then each player will decide from going from the first player and then left and the clockwise where he's gonna start by placing his character in one of these buildings on the map you can choose any building but you can't place the two uh, investigators on the same building so let's say that our psychologist will start in the hospital while our private eye will start uh, city hall after you place your uh, meeples you're gonna take uh, these hybrid enemies that look like this and you have to place the number of players plus one so in this case we're gonna have three of them uh, two of them always are gonna go around uh, your characters and when you're placing them they need to be connected to one of the spots of your block so for the psychologist these spots are available and let's say I'm gonna place it here for now and for our private eye we have these four spots around him so we're gonna place it maybe here uh, the last enemy is not placed around the characters or investigators it is actually randomly spawned on the space and we do that by drawing these hybrid movement cards until you find a card that looks like this which will tell you to place it in the warehouse district so in any spot connected to this district but the closest to the character if there is a character in the adjacent district so in this case something like this and wherever you're placing enemies you want to place them if possible adjacent to other enemies so this guy will spawn here then we're gonna add cultists and you add them depending on the number of players so in this case two uh, cultists go to the uh, buildings and you can place them on any building of your choice but in this case I'm just gonna place them closest to our characters so let's say this cultist will be in the museum they cannot go in the same space where you are and let's say for this the one gonna be in the church There are also deep ones, but you don't place them on the map. They actually come into game uh, because they are much uh, harder enemies. They come into play by some effects. And that would be the setup of the game. I think I haven't forgot anything. Uh, Omen token is also placed, always placed on this terror symbol, the purple one. And... Uh, we are ready to go oh, by the way yeah doing that like that so each turn in this game is split into multiple phases we have the investigator phase monster phase dread phase omen phase and the upkeep phase during the investigator phase each investigator can do three actions and some actions can be done multiple times while some others are actually limited then during the monster phase every monster will activate on the map uh, after that we go to the dread phase where depending on the number of dread cubes you have here some effects gonna happen and during the omen phase the omen is gonna move and during the last upkeep phase you're gonna flip everything up every card that you used or any monster that moves will be flipped back you'll see how that works and you can also if you want discard one of these cards in the general store to just refresh the store all right so let's start playing and i'm going to explain the rest as we go here we have a private eye his health is three you can see a little heart in the top left corner you can carry up to six six cards and um, 
his skills are awareness, uh, strength, and investigation investigation skill. So from left to right, eye is an awareness, fist is of course strength, and little magnifying glass is investigation skill. The numbers below show how that skill is good because in this game you always roll a d10 to test your skill and if you roll a lower or equal than your skill you pass a test everything higher than that it's a failure also every character has a special ability so in this case after i discover a mystery i can add one mystery to this of my choice these are the These are the mysteries. I actually should call mystery token, but it's the same thing. As I said, uh, when I make this game, sometimes there are some, you know, uh, <coughs> mistakes in the text, uh, and you'll see that I'm gonna explain them. But uh, the game is a, you know, work in progress, so there are a lot of rule changes and everything. So as always, I will tell you that when you're watching these playthroughs, take them with a grain of salt because some things may, may change. Psychologist here has a health of 3, can carry up to 4 items or cards. Uh, they have almost the same skills, but my special abilities, all other investigators have plus 1 to their skill. So in the case of the private eye, I have a 6, a six and a 7, which is really good. Alright, to win the game, we have to solve number of mysteries per player in this case so far how i'm playing is two mysteries per player so we need four of these mystery cards solved and then escape from institute to to win the game and each of these mysteries demand number of clues and usually some kind of an item that you have to spend to solve the mystery so for instance, in this case, I need two yellow, one green, one purple clue, and one white is basically any out, out of these three colors. So it could be yellow, purple, or green, and a spell. I would discard that and uh, if I have them in my possession and the mystery will be solved, I would take salt, I would take this card and we would refresh with the new mystery. All right, let's talk about the actions we can do during the investigator phase. So each investigator can do three actions. Some actions can be repeated multiple times, some cannot. The basic action which you always can do multiple times is moving. Investigators move from block to one adjacent block to other, but you can go like diagonal. So must be orthogonal movement so I cannot go from this block to this I have to go around this is also considered block although it's a bridge so I can move here you can move up to three spaces then you can also attack the enemies uh, any enemy that is on the point connected to your block you can attack them and if you want to attack the cultist, you actually have to move inside the space. Uh, you can trade with other investigators, but you have to stand on the same space. But there is a strict rule that only one investigator can occupy the building. So this is a space where we wouldn't be able to trade, but in any other block space that would be possible. You trade any number of clues or cards you have. Uh, then there is a taxi action where if you have any cash you spend one cash you take a taxi you flip this little token on the no taxi sign and then you can move on any block on the map without caring about how the monsters will affect you basically they you are invulnerable for that time for moving uh, this token can be flipped back but it uh, you have to spend an action so basically you have to call a tax later on uh, you can also focus by taking one of these focus tokens and this is limited you can only do it once per turn focus is used to reroll dice and you can't carry more than one uh, you can also discover 
if you stand on the space with a little mystery you can flip this token and you can investigate uh, which can be done on the buildings but I'm gonna talk about that later on so if I didn't forget that's the all the actions you can do so let's start playing going with the psychologist first what I'm going to do I'm gonna move I'm gonna move this way and I'm gonna explain why because while this enemy is standing here he can look to any point from his point in this manner so basically he's watching this street this this and this street all around him so if I would have to cross this street moving from here to here I would have to pass my awareness test if I would fail he will I would have to take a wound he will basically hit me uh, I would still continue moving but you know I would probably gain a wound so in this case I'm gonna move this direction and I'm gonna move one two then for my next action I'm gonna flip this discovered basically a mystery I have found some cash so let me place this out of the bag any token mystery token you found you place it out of the bag they do not come into play later on and I will take one cash and then I'm gonna continue moving all the way up to here and that would be all the actions I can do with the psychologist for this turn with the private eye I have to explain some effects here so as you can see these guys are looking all the way here <laughs> and also if you have two adjacent enemies covering the whole street you are not able to cross it so this is impassable street for me so I can move either this direction or these two directions but I would have to cross the street and then risk it uh, which I'm gonna actually do because I'm planning to go all the way here and check these mysteries so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna focus myself just to be sure and then I'm gonna move this direction but before moving number of spaces I want to move I'm gonna put my character on the street basically before I cross and then I'm gonna roll to check will I pass my awareness which is five so one to five I pass and that's a failure I'm gonna use my focus to zero now let's try again and I pass this time so I can move one two uh, and I'm gonna stop here and for my so I moved I'm for my next action I'm gonna discover this I have found a tome which is one of these cards I'm gonna draw that card put it in my inventory and for my last action I'm gonna move up to here these tome cards show you where you have to go to use your investigate action so I have to go to library investigate and if I succeed I would gain one green and one yellow token you can see they are circled by the green line but if I fail I will get only one purple token all right then we come to the enemy phase during the enemy phase you're gonna move all the enemies on the map uh, moving those that are closest to your investigator first we do that by drawing a hybrid card and this is the number of spaces they're gonna move then we check let's actually start uh, with these then you check what is the closest uh, point from your closest enemy so for this enemy my closest point on the block would be this one so this guy would move three spaces here but we also check who's the closest so one two three four no he will move first so he will go one two three and he will stop there and you flip the token so you know you move them then we check uh, this is one two three four one two three four they are equally distant 
so I can choose uh, which one I want to move first or if sometimes you are not sure we have this bag of tokens here which you can shuffle uh, and draw one so for instance I can move this guy three spaces toward the north uh, but in this if I'm that's if you have like two investigators equally distant but in this case we know that two these two guys will definitely move toward uh, toward me well let's check it out one two three four five yes they definitely gonna move toward me because i'm the closest one for these two uh, enemies so one two three and one two three all right, so you can already see they are kind of almost completely blocking this block on the map. Well, let me explain you what happens if you are, if I if I were standing here. Right now, I would be attacked by this hybrid. I would have to test my strength, and if I would fail, I would take a one wound from them, and I would also lose half of my clues rounded down. But they are not encircle me yet so I'm fine in case you would be completely encircled your character would immediately be dead you would remove it from a game and get a new character so half encirclement they attack you complete encirclement you are dead all right cultists do not move but they do something to the dread uh, for each two cultists on the board you add one dread to the omen track so that's basically their activation during the monster phase then we go to the dread phase during the dread phase you're gonna check how many dread you have here and then then you, you will do one of these things represent with icons in case of two dread you have this icon which also correspond to the mystery deck you will remove the dread and then for this icon here uh, let me show you a closer you will discard the last card from the from this uh, column like this and you will add a new one and then you will execute the icon on the right side you can see the icon with the doom which will push doom one space toward the zero and we will place this into the discard which will hold here uh, these mysteries uh, do not reshuffle so there is a good chance you will not have enough of them to finish the mystery I mean it can happen in which case it is the game over for us so that's one loose condition another loose condition is if this doom token gets to zero and we didn't manage to finish enough mysteries so two per players in our case we didn't manage to finish four mysteries uh, another loose condition is if you if you lose uh, investigators and you have to replace him, replace him but there is no one in the reserve because you already used these guys well that would also be a game over and if you have five or more cultists of the map till the end of the upkeep phase it will also be a game over all right so that was almost the whole turn now we go to the omen phase in which case we're gonna roll a d6 and move this omen clockwise that much space so in this case four one two three four and this will promptly move doom again which is really bad all right upkeep phase we're gonna flip everything back monsters and if you have any cards you use that you maybe uh, tapped or flipped you will flip them back and we can discard one of these but looking here I might discard this one which will push everything toward the right and add a new card so now these ones cost only one cash oh yeah I forgot to talk about these bonuses so everything in the granola co store cost a one cash but these first two items cost two uh, similar to that uh, for these you need plus one more clue of any color for these three first mysteries all right 
let's continue I'm gonna play some more terms so our psychologist here will discover this mystery and he has found an artifact he will draw one of the artifact cards now these I usually give you clues but this one is actually a knight and magical so I don't have to do investigate anything uh, it gives me ability I can do once per turn just I have to spend an action to do this draw one wound card then move up to two investigators to any blocks on the map so basically getting a wound to move a bit more for an action well it's not one of the best but I can always it is a magical item so I can always discard it like in this case if I found this much clues together with those clues to finish the mystery all right my second action uh, let me check something uh, I will focus and my last action I will I will move here for our private eye I think I'm gonna focus and then I'm gonna attack this enemy here so my strength is 5 I need to roll 1 to 5 uh, I actually got to 5 so I will remove this enemy and then I'm last my last action I'm gonna discover this and I will I have found another tome so and I can carry up to 6 of these cards uh, because this is only this is considered like your inventory clues focuses do not go into that number all right town hall okay another mistake here you'll see that on the map it is called a city hall while on my card it's called a town hall I will fix this simply by not changing all the cards I've just changed this to the town hall later on all right now the monster face so they are the closest they're just gonna move forward and block me in that direction and that's all about oh yeah we have two cultists so they will add one dread for each two cultists you add one dread so with the three cultists you will still add only one dread uh, we check a dread we need actually two to do something so this will dread not activate nothing but we do have the omen we'll move one on this little news which is basically the event so we're gonna draw the event card and we're gonna resolve it a session strikes general store was closed today after struggling to maintain their sales so discard all cards from the general store it is not refilled until the end of the next upkeep phase so all of these gonna go to this card and general store is now empty sadly and there's a little question mark basically presenting these mystery tokens telling you where to put them so in esoteric order of Dagon how that works is if we have any empty space this is the district of the esoteric order of Dagon if we have any empty space it will be filled with the mystery tokens well we do have one so one mystery shows there and let's do the upkeep flip everything back no things to discard in the shop if you want to and we continue so let's see psychologist will continue this way to the lighthouse he will flip this he found one green clue which are represented with these cubes and then he will move here and do discovery action again oh he found a witness all right so that's one of these cards now witnesses works a bit different uh, you have to guide them to the space on the map do the investigation and then in this case I will gain a spell and two purple clues if I successful if I'm not successful in the investigation uh, witness is just discarded but in this case these cards go to the bottom of the witness deck 
and I will have to add two dread because I didn't manage to get any information and that's kind of bad also if I get attacked and I get a wound is the I would take the wound but I will also lose the witness because when you attack any NPC it's like consider an NPC walking with you is killed in which case again he will be discarded put on the bottom of the deck well and you will add two dread so they are kind of special you need to watch them out but I'm kind of lucky here because I just need to get to the lighthouse and there are no monsters around me so I'm sure if I I'm also focused I will be able to investigate and get these stuff into my inventory all right let's go to a private eye which is now kind of in trouble I can fight again and maybe kill one of these guys which I'm thinking I'm gonna do I'm gonna attack this guy here so one to five I got a nine so I'm gonna discard my focus to zero and try that again and I got the two so remove this hybrid and now I can move this way without you know I don't want to pass my awareness and maybe get hit so I will walk one and actually where is the library library all the way up here I'm gonna go to the city hall I'm gonna go one two three now if you want to buy something you can spend one cash while standing in general store. So this is where you actually can buy stuff. Uh, right now we don't have any items because they are removed due to recession. But at the beginning of the next turn it's going to refill. So that's all my actions. Let's check the monsters. Alright. So when you draw a card that's going to spawn monster, that's like, like a surge. You're going to spawn the monster, but then you're going to continue drawing to see how much they're going to move. So in this case one monster in the graveyard so when placing them we check who's the closest investigators it would be my private eye so you place them on the spot closest uh, connected to the of course block that is part of the graveyard district but closest to the investigator so in this case here because you can see one two you just need to move two spaces to get to me all right and then gonna, they're gonna move three again we're checking who's the closest they are kind of both are so i can move any of them uh so let's move this guy first he will get here and this guy's gonna move one uh and he doesn't have uh, he had he trying to get here so he will push this character now when you push in character you can push him in any adjacent space so for instance as this guy is coming here this guy can be pushed uh, any adjacent space that is basically in my block so either here or here now there is a rule that if they standing on the edge of the map something like this and you have to push them you always push them out of the map and that's it's kind of bad because it's always going to add to dread because they are moving out of the town and doing who, who know what uh, to the other parts of the country <laughs> all right so that's the movement we still have two uh, cultists which we need to, to deal with so that's gonna add dread then we go to the dread phase yes we have two this will push this out yes I need to deal with these cultists really fast because now this will move to again All right, uh, omen phase. One, two, three. All right, so this is a space, which means we're gonna add a deep one. And when you're adding a deep one, <coughs> excuse me, you, again, you have to place him on the space that is closest to the investigator and adjacent to other enemies, which is kind of really bad for me right now because deep one is gonna spawn either here or here I can choose let's say here uh, lucky for me uh, he, he's outside of the monster phase so there is a still chance I can escape for for this but if this was the 
situation and the end of the monster phase, I would be immediately attacked. But right now with the omen phase, so we skip that. So I can change this uh, if I escape from here, I, they will not be able to attack me because he just spawned and he will not move. All right, uh, let's uh, continue in the next turn. So everything equips. We're gonna refill our shop again from five to one. They always are refilled like one, like this. Oh wait, uh, till the end of the next upkeep phase. So this was the first. Yeah, that was the the last time. Yeah, yeah it's gonna refresh right now. All right, so let's give a starting investigator to a private eye because he's a bit in trouble here and he needs to move well i have a solution i can just try to run passing my awareness or i can fight them now the problem with this is uh whenever you fight the enemies you you can choose which one to fight but when they fight you you basically fight the hardest enemy this one's a bit harder because if they hit you you actually draw two wound cards uh, so I could attack any of these guys but if I stay here and they attack me basically the deep ones will be the, the one that's gonna hit me so I think I'm gonna focus myself for the first action and then I'm gonna try to run uh, toward the city hall going this direction so I have to pass my awareness uh, I could go this direction also but the problem as I said with the deep ones is uh, they always hit you twice so if I fail here I could get more wounds so I'm gonna go around by that hybrid so let's see I need five or less I roll a 9, I'm going to use my focus. Let's try again. I roll a 5, that's enough. I'm going to roll 1, 2, 3. And for my last action, I will investigate this storm in the, in the city hall or town hall. So, I need 6 or less. Let's try it. I got a two that successful investigation we will place this on the bottom of the deck but I will get two purple clues with the two purple and one green with our other investigators now we can think about some of these mysteries we want to solve so we can do this one but I will have to trade and we need another yellow clue because this guy do have a magical item that can be used all right for a psychologist he will move here actually I probably wanna move this witness to the lighthouse so he's gonna move one two three then he's gonna move again one and for the last action he will investigate this witness in the lighthouse so i need six six or less oh i totally forgetting that i have plus one here so i need to because of the psychologist so he actually rolled a six that's a successful investigation so what i will get is one spell and two purple clues and when you're getting a spell you go to the item deck and you draw from the top until you found a spell it's item magical here it is so i found a spell called blood sacrifice and then you reshuffle the rest into the item deck Back. Uh, draw one wound card remove one monster from your block okay so we really if kind of get the wound to kill something so I guess it's a good against the deep ones 
but more important now that I have a spell I can also look about this thing although it cost a bit more clues to finish it. all right it is a monster face so the hybrid always move first so these two guys uh, one two he will move here and the closest spot is also that one for this guy so he will move one two and then I can push him either here or here well in this case let's do it like this all right and then we have a hybrid I mean deep one yeah he definitely will to get so again this is the closest spot so they will do this and now I'm in trouble because I will get attacked and as I said when you get when you're getting attacked because I have only one spot that is not filled when you're getting attacked you basically are attacked by the hardest most in this case a deep one's gonna attack me so my strength is actually six I need to remember that because of the psychologies that give plus one to all skills so it's one to six and I roll a nine so my character will take two wounds and will lose half of his clues rounded down uh, let's remove the clues immediately and then let's see those two wounds oh boy all right so you always draw them one by one so this goes to this card and sadly the private eye has just died actually let's place him here i lose all the items and the clues uh, I will be able to get a new investigator at the beginning of the next turn uh, we move doom by one and we add also two dread so whenever someone dies we move doom and we add two dread for that all right Uh, I kind of play out the turn with the psychologist first but let's say we actually change who's gonna be the first player all right let's continue with the monster phase we have two cultists which will add a dread here and then we go to the dread phase with the three dread we have to spawn another cultist and another deep one so for the cultist let's put one in the library and for the deep one as always needs to be close to the player well this guy is dead so this deep one have to go here so let's place him let's actually place them here that, there then we go to the omen phase it goes here on this amnesia this is amnesia space which means everybody have to discard one clue uh, I'm gonna do one purple and I'm gonna play uh, I'm gonna probably stop here I'm gonna flip everything back let's check this oh this weapon is actually pretty good I'm not gonna discard anything from the shop I'm gonna get the new investigators we're gonna add a mobster into fray and we're gonna place him mm. Let me check something. Well, he's gonna fight a lot. So I actually think him to place him directly in the city hall. And I'm gonna end the video here. We're gonna continue this playthrough and you're gonna see how we're gonna do. So far, it's not that good. Not e either one mystery is solved. We are really low on clues. And. Uh, monsters are making trouble for us all right so see you in the next video and thank you for watching